previous discussions we have seen how sorting can help us speed up searching by enabling binary search which is much faster than brute force search in the last discussion we learned about two algorithms for sorting selection sort and insertion sort the algorithms were simple but not super fast taking up to order n square time to sort an array with n elements today we will start looking at fast algorithms for sorting namely merge sort and quick sort which take only order n log in time to sort an array with n elements these algorithms can be much much faster than the order n square algorithms such as selection sort or insertion sort especially for large arrays recall that in each step of selection sort we found the minimum element in the active range before doing a swap and shrinking the active range by a single element this rate of shrinking the active range is too slow and what led to the order n square time complexity of the selection sort algorithm this is unacceptable for large arrays say those with millions of elements we will now look at two sorting algorithms based on the divide and conquer technique that are much faster recall that the divide and conquer technique takes a problem and solves it by dividing it into smaller instances of the same problem the two algorithms we will learn namely merge sort and quick sort will sort an array of n elements by splitting that array into two smaller arrays and sorting those two smaller arrays let's start with the merge sort algorithm the idea behind merge sort is fairly simple given an unsorted array such as the one we see here we divide the array into two equal halves we sort the left half then we sort the right half and then merge these two sorted arrays to get the sorted version of the full array this merging operation is perhaps how the sorting algorithm got its name merge sort is clever in that it recursively calls itself to sort the smaller arrays however we need to find a way to merge the two sorted smaller arrays but fortunately this turns out to be a fairly simple task as well here is pseudo code for the merge sort algorithm you would notice that this algorithm uses a lot of additional memory while sorting to store the sorted versions of the smaller arrays as we shall see even the merge operation will require additional memory thus this implementation of merge sort is definitely not an in place algorithm recall that a sorting algorithm is called in place if it does not require too much say order n additional memory to sort an array with n elements for example to implement the selection sort or insertion sort algorithms we only needed two or three extra variables to implement swaps etc we needed those same two three variables no matter how large was the array we were sorting you would also notice that merge sort splits the array in the middle before making the recursive calls think a bit about why such a choice was made what would happen if say we split the array with n elements into an array with only one element and another one with n minus 1 elements you also need to keep in mind end cases while deciding where to split the array let us now see how to perform the merge operation suppose we are given two arrays a and b with m and n elements respectively both sorted in increasing order we want to create a new array c with m plus n elements that combines the elements present in both the arrays a and b such that c is also sorted in ascending order we will use the usual way of maintaining active ranges for the two arrays a and b the invariant we will maintain is that we will ensure that any element of a and b outside of their respective active regions would have already been inserted in their proper locations in the array c moreover at least one of the two active regions will shrink by one element at each step since the active regions were the entire arrays a and b at the beginning this would mean that the merge operation would conclude in no more than m plus n steps at which point both active regions would become empty the secret behind the merge operation is that searching for the largest element in a sorted array with n elements can be done in a single step whereas it may have taken up to n steps if the array were not sorted to understand the merge operation better let's take an example here are two arrays both 
with eight elements each both sorted in increasing order and here is a blank array c which we will fill with the elements of the arrays a and b initially the two active regions are the entire arrays a and b respectively note that to find the largest element of the combined array c we need only compare the largest element of a with the largest element of b as shown here in this case a has the larger element so we write down that element in the rightmost position in c and shrink the active region for a notice that the second largest element of the combined array c can now be found by comparing the rightmost elements of the active ranges of a and b a still wins so we write that element in c and shrink a's active region even further this keeps going on we compared the rightmost elements of the active regions write those elements in c and shrink the winner's active region doing so repeatedly will ensure that c is sorted in increasing order and contains all the elements in a and all the elements in b here is a pseudo code for the merge step as an exercise show that merging two arrays of size m plus n takes at most order m plus n time you would notice that this merge algorithm is not an in place algorithm since it first allocates a new blank array with m plus n elements can you do away with this requirement can you rewrite the merge algorithm so that it does not need to allocate a fresh array of size m plus n and instead uses the arrays a and b themselves to store the merged array having studied the merge step we can now move on to finding the asymptotic time complexity of the merge sort algorithm let t of n be the time taken by merge sort to sort n elements and let m of n be the time taken by the merge algorithm to merge two arrays with a total of n elements since merge sort simply breaks the array in half calls itself recursively and merges the sorted versions of the two smaller arrays it is clear that t of n is less than equal to 2 times t of n by 2 plus m of n plus d where d is the time taken to find the middle point at which to split the array in a previous exercise you have shown that m of n is order n which means m of n is no larger than c times n for some constant c the recurrence relation we get here can be solved in the same way as we did for binary search we set n equal to n by 2 and get a new relation which we plug into the original relation to get that t of n is no more than 4 times t of n by 4 plus 2 times c times n plus 1 plus 2 times t this means that for any k greater than 0 we have t of n no more than 2 to the power k times t of n divided by 2 to the power k plus kc times n plus 2 to the power k into t as we did for binary search setting k equals log n and using the fact that t of 1 is no more than c since an array with a single element is already sorted we get that t of n is no more than order n log n try creating an in place version of merge sort by creating an in place version of the merge operation it is worth noting that if we do not split the array into two smaller arrays of roughly the same size then the benefits of merge sort are lost for example if we split an array of size n into two arrays one of size 1 and another of size n minus 1 then you can resolve the recurrence relation to see that merge sort will have a much worse time complexity of order n square this tells us that while designing divide and conquer algorithms it is important to design the divide step very carefully so that's all for this discussion In the next discussion we will look at another very popular sorting algorithm that can sort in order n log n time called quicksort till then stay wonderful and do join us next time